welcome to our demo. Today we will be teaching you about exothermic reactions and showing you a demo. But first, a brief lesson. Our experiment will consist of mixing sulfuric acid, which has a formula of H2SO4, with sugar, which has a formula of H12C22O11. In an exothermic reaction, the reactants react to form the products, and heat is released as well, causing the heat to be on the right side of the equation. In an exothermic reaction, delta H is negative. Delta H stands for the change in enthalpy. Enthalpy is the total heat in a reaction. In a graph of potential energy versus time for an exothermic reaction, the reactants exist at a higher potential energy than the products due to the fact that in an exothermic reaction, heat is released. Activation energy is the energy required for the reaction to begin. In this graph, delta H represents the difference in energy between the reactants and products. Delta H is negative because the amount of energy decreases. In this experiment, we are going to mix sugar with sulfuric acid and oxygen that's in the air to produce carbon, carbon dioxide, water, sulfur dioxide, and heat. We are now going to explain how the reactants rearrange in order to form the products during the reaction. The sugar will start out by donating 11 of its 12 carbon atoms. The remaining carbon will contribute to the formation of carbon dioxide and the O2 will come from the sulfuric acid. The sugar will donate 22 of its hydrogen atoms and 11 of its oxygen atoms, while the sulfuric acid will donate 2 of its hydrogen atoms and the oxygen will donate 1 atom of oxygen. This will create 12 molecules of water. Finally, the sulfuric acid will donate one atom of sulfur and two atoms of oxygen in order to create sulfur dioxide. The reason this works is because of the law of conservation of mass, which states that mass in an isolated system is neither created nor destroyed by chemical reactions or physical transformations. The mass of the products in a chemical reaction must equal the mass of the reactants. The same concept can be applied for energy. The law of conservation of energy states that the total energy of an isolated system remains constant. It is said to be conserved over time. Energy can neither be created nor destroyed. Rather, it transforms from one form to another. First, we need goggles to protect our eyes from the possible debris of the reaction as well as the smoke. Next, we have the stirring rod to stir the water into the sugar and the sugar solution with the sulfuric acid. Then there's the pipette to drop the water into the sugar in order to make the solution more aqueous. We're also going to need gloves to protect our hands since we are using sulfuric acid. And we're also going to need an 18 molar solution of sulfuric acid to pour into the sugar. Next, in order to make our cleanup process a little easier, we're going to put the reaction in a Dixie cup so that we can just directly throw it away in the trash. We're also going to use a 100 milliliter beaker in order to measure the sugar out. And then we're going to use a, the same size beaker to put some water in in order to mix it with the sugar. Next, we have granulated sugar to use as our solute during the reaction. Finally, we have the funnel, which we use while pouring the sulfuric acid into the sugar solution to ensure that we don't spill any onto our hands. Also, make sure you're using a tray during this experiment in order to facilitate the cleanup process. In order for this experiment to work, we're going to need about a 2 to 1 ratio of sugar to sulfuric acid. So we're going to pour enough sugar until about the 40 milliliter mark on the beaker. Next, we pour the sugar into the Dixie cup. Now we add some drops of water in order to create a sugar solution in which the molecules are more mobile and more ready to react with the sulfuric acid. In order to ensure that the sugar and water mix properly, we mix it with a stirring rod. We then visually pour about 20 milliliters of sulfuric acid into the sugar in order to stay true to the ratio. In the final step of our experiment, making sure that the fume hood is on, we stir together the sugar and sulfuric acid to start the exothermic reaction. Once the solution starts to elevate, back up in order to avoid breathing in the toxic fumes. Grab the tray on which the reaction occurred and dispose of the Dixie cup in the nearest trash can. Pour a small quantity of soap solution onto the tray and rinse it under the sink. Finally, make sure to clean off the stirring rod. Thanks for watching our experiment. We hope you learned something. Bye! <laughs> Hello, today we will be teaching you about exothermic reactions and showing you a demo. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> Good afternoon. <laughs> Wake up, wild kids. Hello, today we will be <laughs> Can you just say hello like a normal person? <laughs>
Are you ready? Just start now. We can we can edit this. Hello. Today. <laughs> Wait, no, 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 no. I got it. I got it this time. Hello. <laughs> Good afternoon. Today we'll be teaching you about actively. <laughs> hello. Oh, let's just both say hello. Oh my god. Wait, actually. Hello. Today you were supposed to do it with me. Oh my god. Hello. Hello. Welcome to our demo. Today we will be teaching you. <laughs> no. Hello. Why did I do that? Hello. Wait, you did it before me. Hello. hello. Welcome to our demo. What? Hello. Hello, welcome to our demo. <laughs> this is so annoying that these glasses over here. 